Well, the last may not have been heard over the suspension of Justice Walter Noge as the Chief Justice of Nigeria as the National Judicial Council, NJC, has summoned an emergency meeting at the nation's capital on Tuesday. Sources told Channel's television that neither Justice Onoge, whose suspension has become a subject of controversy, nor Justice Mohammed, the acting CJN, will be allowed to preside over the meeting. President Mohamed Buhari had on Friday suspended Justice Walter Onoge as Chief Justice of Nigeria on the strength of an order by the Code of Conduct Tribunal asking the CJN to step aside. The same order also compels the President to swear in the next most senior justice of the Supreme Court as the Chief Justice pending the determination of the suit against Justice Onoge. The suspension of Justice Onoge has drawn wide criticisms from various bodies, notably lawyers and politicians. Even the international community has expressed its reservations about the implication of the government's action close to the general elections. Meanwhile, the National Executive Committee of the Nigeria Bar Association, NBA, is meeting on Monday over the suspension of Justice Onoge. And as reactions trail the suspension of the justice, the Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, is asking the next in rank to the chairman of the National Judicial Council, NJC, to immediately take over the case involving the embattled Chief Justice of Nigeria within five days, with a view to setting up a committee to investigate the allegations of breach of constitutional asset declaration requirements against him. Serap also wants the NJC to ask Justice Onoge to step aside from his role as Chief Justice pending the outcome of the investigation and to consider the issue of the appointment of Justice Mohammed with a view to ensuring strict compliance with constitutional provisions. The petition reads in part, quote, This matter has inevitably thrown our country into a judicial cum constitutional crisis, which if not urgently addressed would lead to political crisis that would seriously put at risk Nigeria's fledgling democracy, consequently exacerbating the decline in respect for human rights at all levels of government, end of quote. Sarah is concerned that if the issues raised by the suspension of Justice Onoge are not urgently addressed, it could lead to denial of access to justice to the most marginalized and vulnerable section of the population. For the River State Governor, yes, on Wike, the suspension of Justice Walter Noge, if not properly handled, is capable of precipitating full-blown security crisis in the country. The Governor stated this during a visit by the National Executive Committee of the International Federation of Women Lawyers, who also lamented that the crisis may affect women and children. If you can not keep your house in, uh, in order, why do you carry the problem to the judiciary? Why? That you destroy a whole institution. That you not think that you bring another CGN that will burn everything that the courts have done. Nobody knew what led to Boko Haram emergency. Nobody knows which sect will come up again tomorrow. We are talking about insecurity already, and look at the crisis. As somebody who promised Nigerians of security, look at the crisis you are precipitating that will lead to so many things. It's, it's, it's very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. You mean we can make ourselves available to destroy the institution that we belong to? Now they command the Court of Appeal, you must reverse this. Of course, everybody's afraid. If I don't do that, they'll come and pick me up. Meanwhile, a governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Kwara State, Issa Remo, is asking the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onoge, to resign honourably in order to bring a reform to the judicial system in the country. Mr. Remo, who gave his position on the debate while addressing journalists and a lawyer, also applauded the action of the president, asking him to go a step further 
by implementing the 2014 report on the appointment of Nigerians into public office. The suspended two they did everything to make sure not to appear before the Code of Conduct Bureau. Even though the same CJ had made judgment before to say when it comes to allegations of corruption, non-declaration of assets, only the Code of Conduct Bureau could answer or address those issues. In his own court, there are certain judgments that he has made. Now, for the CJ to move from court to court, shopping for court orders, more or less shopping to restrain code of conduct bureau for me is extremely very embarrassing. It has a lot of implication for the administration of justice in this country. For me, this is not leadership by example, and I think the CJ must lead by example. EU works for equity must come with uh, play hands, and I think this is one dictum that has come in the administration of justice. I strongly believe that the CJ ought to have resign rather than going to this level in which the president has to make a broadcast to remove him with all the implications for our legal system. To the debate, the controversy over the Chief Justice of Nigeria is senior advocate of Nigeria and rights activist Femi Falana, who is criticizing both the judiciary and the executive of making errors in the processes leading to the suspension of the CGN. Mr. Falana believes the crisis can be resolved if Justice Onoga resigns and the executive reviews its decision. The senior advocate was a guest on our political program, Sunday Politics. You must learn to respect due process. You can't fight corruption without following due process. Therefore, I'm going to advise, honestly, that the government should, as a matter of urgency, lift the suspension on the chief justice and say the chief justice has so much to, on his own, admitted that he did not declare his assets. He should do the needful by calling it quits. You mean Justice Onogen should, oh, yes. should quit the bench? He should be prepared to quit the bench after the suspension has been lifted. He should be advised. If he's not found guilty because, by any No, court. no, no, no. Yes. Because once you have admitted that I failed in my duty to declare my asset as required by the Constitution, right? You must learn to be civilized, and a government can never be in a hurry. A government can never be allowed to engage in jungle justice or self-help. Unfortunately, this time around, both sides, both the judicial arm of government and the executive arm of government, have disappointed Nigerians. In what way? Ours is the only country in the world, and I have challenged my colleagues to tell me any modern state, apart from banana republics, where you go to courts, to forum shop for court order. No! Well, the presidency appears not to be happy with some of the comments from some members of the international community over the suspension of Justice Walter Onoge. President Buhari's special assistant on media, Mr. Garbashe, who believes the decision of the president is in order. He, however, says in as much as the Buhari government respects the help of these countries in democratic development, some of the reactions are unexpected. Mr. Shehu was a guest on our political program, Sunday Politics. I think this is why since the new American president came into office about two years ago, there has been so much quarrel between them and Russians because one country is accusing the other of meddling in their own elections. In, in our statement, we did say we are interested in being assisted to improve our elections and to grow our democracy. However, where these attempts aimed at dividing our people or sowing seeds of discontent or trouble, no, this government will not accept. In this particular instance, 
most of the argument put against us by those foreign countries says that this is the wrong time, three weeks to elections, you don't do a thing like this. And I think that uh, if they were fair to us, they should know that in our own laws, a policeman can make arrest on Christmas Day. He can make arrest on Saturday or on Sunday. It, there is no holy day on which they cannot, you cannot apprehend you know, criminals. So our laws should be allowed to work. And the president acted upon a directive by a code of law, recognized by our own constitution. And so therefore, our president has done no wrong. They will not have accepted this in their own countries. In the meantime, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiko Bubaka, has again compared the Buhari government to that of the late military dictator, Sani Abata. In a statement by Mr. Bubaka thanking the U.S., U.K. governments and the European Union for their responses on the suspension of Justice Walter Onoge, the PDP flag bearer says he is not fighting for justice for Onoge, but he is fighting for the Constitution. Mr. Tiku says the current situation is like a deja vu, reminding him of scenarios under a particularly brutal leadership, uh, military dictatorship. He adds that Nigerians witnessed the illegal and arbitrary removal of many innocent people from their positions of authority, and many said nothing because they were not from the ethnic group of those affected, a style of operation Mr. Tiku accused President Buari of learning very well from his teacher. Elsewhere, the Anambra state government says it rejects in totality the endorsement of the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiko Abubakar, by the Igbo socio-cultural organization, Ohanez Indibo. The secretary to the state government, Professor Solu Chukulubelu, and the state commissioner for information, Mr. Dinuba, in a press conference held in Oka, the state capital, says Anambra was not given the opportunity to make an input in the decision as a financial member insisting that the outcome is unacceptable and cannot stand. The, the point remains, remains, I never called it wrong. You got it wrong. And there is nothing that stops the state government from stating that. Also, when the state government did not have the opportunity of putting his own case, is it possible you could ask yourself this question? If Anambra State had gone there, made his own case forcefully, is it possible that he could have swayed the decision? That others may also have listened? Anambra State government delegation went there to, to argue the case that nobody should be endorsed. In May last year, every state government refused in the southeast to host the Hanese meeting. On, on political reforms on of this country. Yes. Only William Biano did it, financed it. He was the only governor came, who came. No other governor. Others could not even send their deputy governors. Not even send it to the government. They were all afraid. All of you were here just a few months ago. Even some of the people today claiming to be both candidates couldn't have the courage to attend to defend the both position. Today, these opportunities are now claiming, oh, we are defenders of evil interests. Where we are there, 